Okay, morning everybody. So uh, I'm not going to repeat the thanks for everybody, but uh, still thank you everybody for coming over. Exciting to see uh, so many of you. Some new faces and a lot of faces we've seen before. So we're going to shift a little bit gears and start you know, talking more about the product. So I'm trying not to take so, so much time. It's primarily the Adi's presentation here. But I wanted to start mainly um, with kind of reminding us what we did, high level, the, the focus areas uh, for Rosetta. If you remember, it's what we've presented uh, last year. Actually, these were the main focus areas that we presented, we're gonna work on uh, throughout the year, uh, enhancing more of the core functionalities in Rosetta as a result of many of the feedbacks came from you. Uh, more synergy and integrations with other products. And also, we have noted that we needed to enhance and streamline the implementation of Rosetta as a process. While we, you know, we made a lot of progress with these points, we continue to, to work and to enhance this area, but along these points, there are additional focus areas that we've put and decided together with you know, collecting the feedbacks from you that we wanna also focus this year and next year as part of the product. The first one was more about the interoperability and out of the box. So it kind of a little bit contradicts sometimes, but while we, you know, at the core for Zeta, and you'll see in, in Addis presentation at Warren, it's its ability to really integrate, to leverage APIs and interfaces to integrate with more and more solutions. We still, you know, found out that we want to have more out of the box capabilities to save time and to have fast ramp up, you know, fast start with the Rosetta. So this is one area. The second one, everything that relates to the user experience and performance. So here we'll give you examples about the actual user interface of Rosetta. I think that, you know, those of you with the recent version already uh, get exposed to some improvements there, as well as with regards to performance of the solution. Uh, in that regard, by the way, we have established uh, about a year ago a team within Rosetta that everything they do is about performance and scalability. So, we, you know, we're testing. We also, um, you know, got the permission from one of the largest customers, the National Library of Israel, to use their own data as part of our testing environment. So that's really helping us to increase the performance and do a large scale testing on the Rosetta uh, to meet uh, the more demanding environments. And the third part is, you know, we, we continue to work on core functionalities, but more important, and I think that it came across also from what Barr mentioned, you know, the collaboration with the user groups and you as customers getting your requirements and we'll, we'll touch upon that as well. So we talked about, you know, this very tense slide about the different um, APIs and interoperabilities of the Rosetta. So while this is a key, I would say, capability and feature, things that many of, of you and our customers do like about the Rosetta, its ability to really integrate with so many systems, we also realize that we need to simplify. And, and simplify in the sense that we want to have as many as possible out-of-the-box integration, integration hooks, um, configurations that are out of the box. So we're working both on allowing more integration, more interoperability, but also to reduce the ongoing work when needed to integrate. So it's, it's a balance that we're trying to keep and, and Adi will further refer to that in his presentation. And it also means continuing uh, our, you know, as I said, out of the box, different plugins that you, you know, no need to define again, define in the Rosetta, added them, you know, uh, as part of our uh, out of the box configurations, which is just, you know, a few of them just to mention. In terms of uh, improving the uh, user experience, so the, there are primarily, I would say, two main levels here. The first one, um, as I mentioned, it's the actual infrastructure scalability. I mentioned the fact that we have uh, establish a team that is focused solely on the scalability um, and the performance of the solution. Okay, they're testing, analyzing the database, 
the, the different servers, the whole processes from ingest, you know, to delivery, etc., to see where are possible bottlenecks and improving. And we were able to improve dramatically in some of the areas, including the ingest, ingest rate of Rosetta, uh, very uh, significantly in the, in the recent uh, versions. Performance Lab, by using real, large data coming from customer. And we also um, uh, launched a, a new tool, an external tool. Right now, it's you know, in some kind of a trial mode with few customers that sits on top of the environment and analyzes any possible bottlenecks and issues in performance. And when it does, it automatically sends an alert, an email to Exlibris to analyze that. So this is something, again, on top of what we're doing in order to really, in real time, try to be on top. It's primarily for a very large, complex environments that we want to further improve by getting a real data from the field. On top of that, it's the uh, user interface and the actual day-to-day -day work that we are improving. So we're co we'll continue to improve the user interface. Um, we've done so in several areas already. Uh, a nicer user interface, but it's not only that. We're also looking at the actual workflows, how to make different workflows, configurations, the whole steps there much easier, maybe consolidate some of the steps. Um, so these are the areas, the different two levels that we are focusing on whenever it comes to the uh, user experience and the system performance. Lastly, I think that one of the most important assets for us, uh, and we'll, we're committed to continue doing so, is the work with you, the user group, getting from you the feedback, the requirements, uh, we're happy with the fact that, you know, different uh, focus areas have been established, as mentioned over here. And, you know, judging by the, the past that, you know, we have, we're able to take these lists and to really add them into the roadmap and to uh, get from you a very good feedback about the different areas of Rosetta that we can further improve. So it's really something valuable to us. And uh, the better, you know, uh, use cases that will help us as a community to improve the product, um, obviously, uh, it's, it's good. And, and I'm sure that Adi will refer to the fact that we're also, you know, moving to the idea exchange and to open it for more and more uh, ideas coming, not replacing this, but as, as an addition to uh, another venue from which we can get ideas and improvements to the product. So with that uh, short part, just as, as an introduction, I'll hand over to Adi to continue the, maybe the more details here. Thanks. Thanks. So before going to the roadmap, just a short uh, recap of the last year, what, what we've done since the last advisory group meeting in New York till this one. So July, we had the new customers, the Victoria University of Wellington from um, New Zealand, so it's of Rosetta, so the main reason we've had them, so we'll have, so Steve and Ross will have other people to, to speak with in there, far away from here. Um, um, uh, great people, by the way, great customers. Unfortunately, they, won't, they weren't able to make it here, but um, they've already d done some really nice things with Rosetta, developed a new viewer, and I really, uh, I, I really believe they'll be a very important addition to this community over here. August, as we just said, we've uh, created this new Rosetta dedicated infrastructure team. I won't go over all this. Uh, uh, we said most of it. Just say that they're also, apart from this, all these tools and the performance lab, they're going systematically uh, part after part in, in, in the product, analyzing the data, database, solar publishing, indexing, and so on and so on, making sure that uh, uh, it's scalable and works in, um, in, in good performance. And last but definitely not least, this system is this uh, team is also in charge of the security, investing also a lot of time in uh, improving the security of the system, ma making sure that your content and your systems are secure. Um, in September, we've released version 5.1 uh, with a new UI. Um, I won't go, of course, over. Um, all the features, I think that most of you actually have already, if not all of you, already um, 
uh, installed 5.1. I just mentioned some, some, some of the uh, functionalities here, like the new viewers, new HTML5 viewers, like the representation viewer, the new um, XML editor, uh, the file comparison plugin to enable uh, automatically comparing files pre and post migration. Um, I said the new UI and so on. Again, dude, because of the time, I won't focus on this. Um, in 20, uh, October, we had the integration between Alma and Rosetta at the National Library of New Zealand. So the National Library moved from Voyager, which was integration, integrated with Rosetta, into Alma. It's now integrated with Rosetta, enables the synchronization of metadata. So basically, we've worked, we're working on a couple of workflows here in terms of Alma-Rosetta integration. It's a basic one is the two-way metadata synchronization over OAI, where uh, it, it enables you to edit content, edit metadata in Alma using the familiar UI in one place. Uh, so, so one place to manage different types of content, edit there in Mark, and then uh, it will be synced with Rosetta and preserved there and also uh, move to Dublin Core in Rosetta. Another workflow which we've released in version 5.2 is a support, a start, start, starting start of support for digitization workflows, basically enable you to deposit content in Rosetta, and then Rosetta is calling directly uh, Alma's APIs in order to uh, create the remote repository, uh, the Alma remote repository to Rosetta, and to close the digitization requests. And we'll be working also later on and enhancing this basically enable, enabling direct deposit from Alma into Rosetta, so librarians won't need to go into another system to deposit content and so on, or even not to external tool, but we'll be able to do this directly from Alma, and also as a roadmap, the ability that Rosetta will be as a sort of preservation system, preservation solution for content, uh, digital content stored in Alma. November, I've mentioned this already, more than 40 HBZ members who are joined Rosetta. Um, we're very happy about this. Again, they're just now in the implementation process, doing some really nice stuff with research data, audiovisual content, and other, con and other, and, and other uh, uh, types of content. And we're happy to see our members here and we're looking towards the fruitful collaboration with the entire community here as well. Uh, December. So tomorrow in my presentation, tomorrow we'll discuss the different ways that are, there are in, 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 uh, in feeding new enhancements requests into, into, into Rosetta. Uh, one of them is the idea exchange. So in December we had the most popular idea with 13 different supporters, 28 votes regarding the enhanced update metadata web service and indeed we are uh, we have implemented this and this will be available in the upcoming upcoming version of Rosetta and we'll discuss we are seeing much higher numbers by the way in Alma in terms of users of course it's a bigger community but think I think, think still we think that we need to to further enhance this you uh, further use this platform and we'll discuss this uh, tomorrow January not, all, not only the Alma implementation team is working hard, also the Rosetta implementation team is working hard. We had in uh, January about 10, 10 implementations this is parallel. We have invested a lot in, in this two years, I, I would say, in streamlining the implementation process. Most of you are already aware of this new dedicated team, the Rosetta implementation team that we've created in which we've re revised all the processes, all the, all the tools, and so on. But this is, the changes we've done here are not relevant only for um, new customers, but also for existing ones, because we're working on new recorded training materials. We've already uploaded, uh, I think, 12 or 13, and we're working on new ones. So it's also good for you when you have you know, new stuff coming to the library, so they'll be able to access this uh, training videos on the Knowledge Center and see them. And also doing some development, supporting the implementation needs with um, easier means to migrate content or to ingest content to Rosetta. And again, this is something that will help also the entire community. Um, February, State Library of Victoria select Rosetta, third state library in uh, Australia after the New South Wales and uh, Queensland. We have the representative, representatives here. Again, they, are, they weren't able to join, but they are currently starting the implementation process, moving to, from digital into Rosetta and we are very happy to see another state library joining us. 
March, we've released version 5.2. Anyone knows who, which football uh, club is this? Yeah, the local people. Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday, of course. So this is uh, the, the local uh, football club, which apparently I've, I've learned it's the oldest food, food, still playing food, football club in the world. So yeah, applause for this uh, uh, football club and for the locals here. So they're also happy about uh, the version, uh, the of version five to two. <laughs> Again, in a nutshell, uh, what we've done there, I've discussed the integration with Alma in terms of digitization flows, um, the ability to deposit content using Bagit bags, um, access rights policies, audit trails, the ability to see what were the changes that made, were made in access rights throughout the years. Um, Samuel syndication, native, native support for Samuel syndication, and local syndication, and again, many things out there. Those of you who have not installed it, installed it yet, you know, happy to, we will be happy to see you on this version, and all the information is, of course, available, publicly available on the Knowledge Center. April, we've joined the Open Preservation Foundation, um, and uh, actually last week, Michelle and I were in the annual general, general meeting of the Open Preservation Foundation. We should have a call here, right? Is it here? Over there, yeah. So OPF and the, the person behind Jove, so all those of you who know Jove, probably all of you know Jove, the, the tool for that Rosetta is using for um, all, all this technical stuff, so it's it's... He's a guy. He's a guy behind behind Jove. So we've participated in the Jove hackathon. These are the, the Rosetta. Some of the Rosetta developers we've actually uh, were involved in the hackathons and contributing some code uh, to the community. And we are looking forward towards more more uh, collaboration with this uh, with this team, the Open Preservation Foundation. May. So the support team is working hard on closing cases. We. Our, we know that we have some challenge. We had some challenges this year in the with, with, with the support, and we are not hiding this. And we have a dedicated session tomorrow by Dan, our uh, support director, which he'll discuss uh, the, the hard work they're doing in the support team in order to um, to improve your experience there. But as you see, we are working hard on reducing the backlog of the support team. And this, like for instance, almost 60 cases were closed uh, in May, during May. Last but not least, this month we are happy to celebrate 10 years uh, for Rosetta, as Steve just said, and we've prepared. Draw back the covers and rub my eyes, and what is that I see? In the mirror, I could see my own reflection, and he's staring back at me. He said, in the day, there are a thousand ways, a million possibilities. So sleepy head, hear what I said, get out of bed, no, don't you have some place to be? And then he said, hey there, what you lagging for? Turn the frown upside down and get on out the door. Hey you, what you gonna do? The circumstances, they don't change before the altitude. You don't need a sunny sky. Wait for too long and your life is gonna pass you by. Just put some music in your step and it can go a little something like this. Yeah, so happy 
to us all. And now we'll start with um, the roadmap. I have 30 minutes, will be challenging, probably will take some time and we'll manage later on. Um, so, but let's start. So in terms of the schedule, we'll have, um, the next version will be released in less than two months from now, version 5.3, 5 5.4 by the end of the year, and then we're planning two major releases next year, each at the end of every half. Um, the, first, um, the first feature I would like to discuss is SIT metadata search. So currently, metadata is indexed in Rosetta when it's moved to the permanent repository. We'll now start indexing SIP metadata as, as soon as possible when it's ingested into the system. Well, this will enable you to search for content during the ingest process, either via the UI, the new, new UI for this, or via, or via SRU, and we'll you know exactly where the content is, in which stage it is, whether it's in a specific, maybe it's in one of the TA uh, workbench tabs stuck there, or in the three A's, we'll be, you'll be able to, to know this via, again, either via new UI or a SRU to um, make sure that you know where the co your content is. So now, you need your devices on. Those of you who have been here last year, you should know, be familiar with this. You need to, pull, to point your browser to this link over here, pollev.com slash rbautos699, and you should be able to start voting on this feature. So whether it's very helpful, was always struggling to find my interested content, will probably be helpful in some cases, or no need, I'm able to manage my interested content using the existing tools. So we'd like to see your vote there. Both we have more people here, at least more Rosetta people are using Rosetta. Those who don't have Rosetta, uh, some of the questions will be more, uh, I mean, will, will be more challenging for you, but some are like more general questions, we'll definitely be able to vote in terms of journal things and digital preservations. Are we still voting? Good. Anyone have problem connecting? Anyone who wants to vote? Is not able to vote. Okay, it's move, still moving. Anyone still trying to vote? The first time we'll do it sometimes out, the next time we'll do it for the quick because we don't have time. But first time probably struggling. Okay, so let's uh, let, let's move. So apparently about third to be think we need now in about half. We'll be happy to have this. Uh, so we'll have this, by the way, it's already implemented. We'll have this in the next version. Uh, another thing, uh, this is, this is for this functionality we've been working with the TA Workbench working group from the, from, from, from the users, basically enable you to do bulk, oper uh, bulk um, operations on content in the TA Workbench. So for instance, if you have, um, um, content file uh, which failed in format identification, metadata extraction, or some other thing, and you don't want to create a rule that will be applied always, but you just want to work to, to, to apply a change for this specific SIP, for instance, to ignore the error or to create, you know, to assign automatically an extension and so on, you'll be able to do this via the UI in some sort of bulk operation on all the content that is part of the SIP without creating a rule, so it's sort of an ad hoc rule. And also the ability to manually assign a format and extension, not, and not, not something that was suggested by Rosetta using our tools or our format library, but in, in, if you'd like to override the rule, you'd like to manually assign, uh, assign a rule, you'll also, always be, also be able to do this there. So, in terms of this one, this is extremely important. I find the cur current workbench hard to work with. <laughs> 
First one was fast. Nice improvement. It will be probably help me sometimes in my regular work or I'm hardly using the TA workbench, but rather trying to handle technical is is issues pre-ingest from before they are in Rosetta. Wow, there's a clear need here. 90%. Okay, so I think the trend is very clear, and so we don't want, want this feature, so we'll take it out of the system. Okay, we'll have, we'll have this, we'll, we'll be working, uh, starting working on this version 5.4, and also then 6.0 uh, and other things, but definitely this is something that will be, uh, that we'll, we'll be taking care of and making sure that the, your experience at tier workbench will be um, easier and simpler. Duplicates reports, so the ability to identify duplicate, ob duplicate objects in the system, either on the file level by comparing checksums, so if you have two files interested which have the same checksum, probably you have a duplicate here, or using a metadata identifier, it's not always the, the best, uh, no, ident uh, really identify that a duplicate will be able to see the, check the report and see whether it's really a duplicate, and this report will be available both on the consortium or the institutional level. <coughs> so this is very useful, might come out handy in some cases, or duplicates should be managed before they are deposited into Rosetta and not inside the digital preservation system. <coughs> okay, so here also we have indeed a, a clear uh, lead here. And this, by the way, we have already added this report. It will be available in version 5.3, so we'll be able to manage duplicates in, I mean, to identify duplicates in Rosetta. Another thing we've done in 5.3, we've added a new report for uh, events history. So basically, we'll be able to generate a report by any of the hundreds of events that the system has, take the event ID, take the date range, and uh, see what happened, uh, what content, what, what um, IEs were actually this event uh, has, was applied or was running on them. Examples we could be indexing failures or a code report for set management and, and other things. You'll be able to create any report that you would like based on any event ID. No questions here. You've, you've got inside anyway in 5.3. Integration with fixed shares this is something we'll have a presentation from the, with the University of Sheffield um, in about an hour or so. Uh, so basically, those of you who are not familiar with Fixture, just in a nutshell, it's sort of an online uh, re uh, repository for research data. The University of Sheffield has this. Uh, we are, we'll be harvesting content using OAI from Fixture. So this is already available in 5.3. It's not something developed only for Fixture. It's actually, we've extended the OAI harvester to match different uh, IDs, different identifiers. And so uh, this will be uh, helpful also for other repositories. And then, Fixture is just now provided as an API. We'll be able to call back Fixture and notify immediately when a content is preserved in Rosetta. So this will be available later on. So in terms here, we have Fixture. We'll probably be using this. We would like to see such an integration also with other repositories. And we are managing everything in Rosetta, so such integrations are not needed. Okay, so it's interesting to actually to know what other integrations we'd like to see. And so the next question, which should appear now, I see it already in my device, but apparently it's not yet here. Which systems have you integrated Rosetta with? Uh, which systems have you integrated Rosetta with? Already integrated. Multiple answers are allowed. Let's see what happened here. Let's try it again. Okay, it's coming. Good. So you can put. You can have more than one answer here. We have a sort of word cloud here. So mention everything that you've integrated Rosetta with. Could be also Alma, Primo, Xlibris uh, systems, non xlibris systems. So free text is available here. Oh, it's not coming yet. Just a second. I am connected. You, are, you, you don't see this poll, do you? Not yet. Okay. So let me see. Let's activate it again. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, should be yeah. now we're good. Yeah. Okay, this is interesting. But then we'll have a session later on, led by Teresa and you, we've got the integrations. And um, so this is some of the integrations. I just would like to remind you that we'll be more than happy to see a blog in the developer network telling us how we've actually integrated the system with. And I, I have, by the way, uh, it's still, okay, still coming. Everything is stored here, so I'll have uh, everything later on. We'll be able to send this to you to see what other people have done with the system. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> this is nice. Okay, we'll be moving forward because of the time, but uh, those questions are uh, still coming by. And the other question is, which other system would like to see Rosetta? No? Which, uh, yeah, I would like to see Rosetta integrated with. So like with, that we've done with Fixture, which out of the box integration would like to see with which systems? And we'd like to see, we'd be happy to see the priorities here in terms of like, how many people. So the Leuven people were, were the first one. <laughs> to answer, <laughs> let's see how many other people have the scope archive. So thanks for this. Again, we'll be looking at this and see what other, out of the Alma, his Alma and Scope archive is another one there and see what we can do there. Um, okay, I'll move moving forward. As Dvir mentioned, we would like to, like to see more out of the box preservation tools in Rosetta. Uh, I'm mentioning some, some like metadata extract, additional metadata extractors which are available out of the box. We have already some of them, of course. Like Joe, we have an uh, NLNZ metadata extractors and others, and also migration tools. Um, and again, to enable you to have this, you know, instead of adding this as a plugin, we'll add the plugin uh, for you. And also here, I'd like to actually, it's an open question, I'd like to see which preservation tools would like to see integrated with Rosetta, and we'll be happy to see the, what are the views here, and what are the more important ones. Though we'll probably take this discussion also with the preservation uh, planning uh, working group. Fido. Image magic we have. By the way. Okay, so again, we'll be happy to start integrating such tools into Rosetta and we'll, we'll have a discussion with the working groups regarding the prioritization uh, and the importance of, uh, of this tool. So I'll give it another couple of seconds, but we'll need to stop due to the time. So apologies for this, I'm moving forward. Um, 
multiple preservation tool support. So this is something that we'd like to um, uh, implement moving forward. Basically, you know, you, you can use different multiple metadata structures in Rosetta, but for different types of content, for specific content, you can use only a, a single one. So the, so the ability to have extraction, uh, so the metadata extracted from using different tools for the same content, and then Rosetta will sort of, uh, you know, handle the, con the, 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 the metadata together, and also to have multiple formal identification tools, so to, to enable to cross-check the, you know, the identification of one tool using another tool. And here, actually, the questions we'd like to ask is, this is a crucial pre preservation system. This is nice to have in a preservation system. Currently, in most cases, one tool satisfies most of my needs, and the fourth one is actually someone that was something that was raised last week in the OPF meeting, that having multiple tools doing the same thing is a waste of resources of the community. And if we have people like developing Jove and developing other tools, instead of focusing on improving one tool that is doing it the best, may, maybe is um, may, 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 maybe it's a waste of time. And actually, we should have the tools of the world unite. And this again, this was an uh, interesting discussion, starting of discussion on this last week in the OPF. Um, Apparently, the people here are not holding this view. Carl, this is for you, the D. This was discussed last week. We got the ability to have actually less tools doing the same. So apparently, we have here um, a clear indication. And version 6 is something that we're definitely looking into it. Again, this is something that we need a lot of work with the format library as well to define the significant properties that should be extracted and so on. Um, support custom events, so the ability to provide customs, uh, custom events as part of the SIP into Rosetta, um, focusing mainly on premise events, so we'll be able to provide your, your events to the system. I think, I think I'll skip the question here because of the time. Uh, a new viewer, a new IE or METS viewer, a, a responsive one, mobile friendly, a configurable. This is just an example. This is a new rep viewer. Probably more or less will look like this, just with the ability to have different IEs in, in, inside of it. Um, this is the results for, from the poll that we had last year regarding what are the new viewers or the new format support you'd like to see in Rosetta. And as we see, can see, last year the winners, winner was IIIF. Uh, other ones would like, had like probably like TIFF work office, but IIIF was clearly the winner. And just in a nutshell, what's IIIF? IIIF is basically a set of APIs, a standard that uh, enable integration between um, ser image servers and Im Im image um, viewers um, with an exchanging information regarding to the, to, to, the, to, to, to the image, regarding the metadata, regarding the presentation and stuff like this. Um, so we've added triple F uh, support in Rosetta in the upcoming version, version 5.3. And what will Rosetta do for you in, in here? We'll have a triple F manifest, uh, which will describe, which come out of the box. We'll have a, a, a server, out of the box triple F servers based on the open source uh, Cantaloupe server. Triple X viewer based on the universal viewer, a file viewer based on open street, street dragon. So you'll be able to take all these tools as a whole and basically have a working end-to-end triple F solution, or you'll be able, since it's everything based on the standard, you'll be able to take some of these tools. So for instance, you'd like to decide that you'd like to use a different viewer, let's say Mirador, but you'll still be able to use our manifest and server and uh, plug in a different uh, viewer. So, yeah, please move, okay. What I'd like to ask you here is, Got triple F support. This is exciting. We'll use it as app. We'll be probably using it in the future. We will, we have already developed developed our own triple F implementation. No need. We are using Rosetta as a Docker archive. Or sorry, can you please explain once more what triple F is? All right, it's not moving. It's still in the previous question. Let's do it again. Okay. Interesting. Still forthcoming. Okay. So about half of the people will be using it either now or later on. 
but 40% are using Rosetta as a dark archive here in the room. And those of you who are not, still don't know what's IIIF, I'm happy to let you know there's a session later on today by offer, uh, so maybe you'll be, know more about IIIF. Uh, and again, I want to repeat the question from last year, what new out of the box viewers or format support would like to see in Rosetta moving forward? Again, this is an open. Okay, so hardly, this will be TIFF I download, I'm not sure what this means, so if you can explain later on. Work, office, okay, so interesting stuff over there. Again, we need to move due to the time. Extend SRU capabilities, we'll add authentication to SRU requests, add additional query operators, as listed here, I won't say this. And then enable configuration of the SRU response, so basically we'll need to configure the type of response using the Excel you're, using, you're getting from the system. And my question here is, what questions here is, we're using SRU extensively, so any improvement will be great. We are using SRU sometimes, so some of these improvements may be helpful one day. We're not using SRU at all, or I really want to participate in this poll, but unfortunately I have no idea what SRU is, which is fine as well. So about half of the people um, are using it extensively. So yeah, 50 something percent are using it in one way or another. Okay. As said, we're going to improve more the UI. And it's not only about the UI, it's not the user interface, it's also user experience in terms of simplifying workflows. We'll add, for instance, in the upcoming release, drag and drop of rows in the tables which require ordering. A new built UI in 5.4, until now we've mainly improved the UI of the interface, not of the, not of the built report, so we'll be working there as well. And again, other thing, things boast UI and UX, as I said before. So I love the new UI. I have a Rosetta screenshot hanging <laughs> in my living room. I hope all of you will say this. The new UI looks good and initial improvements are important. Nice. I want the old, old UI back or it's a back office system. Who cares about the UI? No one's hanging the one in the, in the living room. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we have some people with a very interesting artistic uh, <laughs> preferences here. Okay, thanks. So at least no one likes, no, no, no one wants a new UI back. So at least in this terms, we are good to go. As I said, we know we are currently invested mainly in some sort of UI uplift and we'll be adding more and more user experience uh, enhancements that will enable you to work easier in the system and m moving forward. Uh, we'll be also adding user preferences. Uh, so provide customized functionalities per user, like you know this recent search results, uh, favorite menu, menu items, uh, dashboard and uh, customer dashboard and so on. Again, things that will be enable you a better user experience in the system. And I'll skip the questions over here as well. 
I don't really have time here, so this will be available. Of course, all, all the slides, my presentation will be available, so you'll see what you're going to get already in the next version. Many of the things mentioned here, like the IIIF support, SIT metadata search, duplicates report, uh, event history, um, and, and so on, will be available really soon uh, in, uh, in the next release. Version four, we'll, be, we'll see other stuff coming from here. Uh, again, it's planned, we didn't finalize it yet, but like the SOU stuff, tier workbench improvements were very important here in, in this room as we've seen, uh, new, new out of the box tools and other things. And rest of the things we're looking into 2017 again because of the time, uh, 2018, sorry, because of the time I won't uh, cover this, but basically the other thing that we've discussed in this session. So last question here, it's a wish list. Other things I won't, didn't cover here, just free text, other things that you'd like to see uh, moving forward. Again, we'll analyze it uh, later on. In this case, it's not a word cloud. So you can you would use any, um, any text you would like. Ah, it's not available, it's available? It is, yeah, okay. And this is, I think, this is my last slide. I think, oops, yeah, sorry. Okay, while, while you're writing this, I'll, I'll leave this open. Um, so I'd like to thank you for the session. Um, due to the time, we'll have a break now until 11. A little, a little behind time, which we should be okay. So 11, please be back here. Those who still are presenting and didn't handle me their, um, their presentation yet, please do it now, especially, especially those who are presenting after the break. And again, you have given away there and coffee and refresh refreshments are served in the bar outside there. And you can continue to add stuff here. Okay, we are, we are seeing some recurring uh, theme there. And we'll, be, we'll definitely be discussing this tomorrow in our in the support session. Copy awareness. <laughs> So, more than welcome to go to the coffee. And again, 11, please, let's be here back and start the next session. Thank you very much.